sorry, Michael David Smith. Michael David Smith, who writes for Pro Football Talk. Michael, I'm sorry I got your name wrong, but I'm really glad that you came on board with us to talk. Via Skype. That's correct. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, Michael, I, I said to Woody a couple of minutes ago, Woody did, just did a commentary on the subject, and we usually do a little discussion after the commentary, and I said to Woody, tell me if you agree with this, I think this might be the biggest problem the NFL has going forward for the next couple of decades. Young people watching actual NFL players walk away from the game for fear of injury. Agree, disagree? Well, I, I think the key point there is young people because I don't think this is a problem for the NFL this year or next year or two or three or four years from now. What I think this is a problem for with the NFL is that I bet you today all across the country, moms and dads are calling up youth football coaches and high school football coaches and saying, hey, I heard about this Chris Borland. If he thinks football is too rough and tough for him, how do you know that my son is going to be play, playing football and is going to be safe? I think down the road it's a problem for the NFL, and today it's a problem for youth football and high school football. Michael, I said this was a singular act by a player that I don't think will have the wide-ranging effects that uh, a lot of people in the media have proclaimed. And I would, I would respectfully say to you that I, because of what – the National Football League has become. It is not a white man's sport. It is not a white middle class sport. Those kids have already gone to soccer. They have moved to lacrosse. They have gone to basketball. That I don't think there's going to be the reaction that those who try and escape poverty in this country turn to boxing. The Italian Americans turn to baseball and boxing. The uh, Irish Americans turn to boxing. The African Americans turned to baseball and now have turned away from baseball, Latino Americans, that I think as long as this country is dominated by minorities playing sports to escape their lives in poverty, that you won't see that kind of problem. I mean, we've already seen the the ex massidus ex mass, mass exodus. exodus to soccer by white middle class Americans. I, I just don't see and, and the NFL will claim its sport is safer than Silverman. Well, you know, I saw one survey that said there really is a correlation to income in terms of whether a parent wants their child to play football. And, you know, in the wealthier families, the household income of over $100,000, there are a lot fewer parents who want their boys playing football than there are in low-income families, you know, less than $30,000. They almost all say, yeah, go ahead and do it. To me, though, that is concerning. I don't think we should just say, well, they'll, they'll still get plenty of players from lower-income communities. I, I still think that is a concern for the long-term health of the game if increasing numbers of people, and especially upper-class people, are saying, we don't want our kids playing football. I think that is a concern for the game, but I also think it's a concern for the game down the road. I, I, I don't agree with those who say, well, this is going to have an immediate impact on the NFL because we've been talking about concussions for a long time now. I mean, it was, I think, six years ago that there were congressional hearings into concussions in the NFL. It's not like concussions are a new story. And, and in the six years since they had those congressional hearings, football has only gotten more popular. So I'm not convinced that, that this is anything that's going to affect the NFL's popularity anytime soon. But I do think you have to worry about it down the road. Our guest is Michael David Smith. He's the managing editor of a, a very popular site called Pro Football Talk, a site that, that Woody and I read every day. Um, Michael, how concerned is the NFL about this? And, and I want to go on record as saying I, I don't think that the Borland thing by itself will impact anything greatly. But if there is an accumulation of players who start walking away from the game, then there might be an effect. How concerned is the NFL as far as you know? The NFL is concerned, and it was very telling that yesterday the NFL released a statement about the Chris Borland retirement. They didn't release a statement when Jake Locker retired, when Jason Worlds retired, when Patrick Willis retired. Chris Borland's retirement felt fundamentally different because he's a younger player. He only played one year. 
he hasn't made the kind of money that those other guys ha- have made. He decided to go about his retirement by going to the authors of the League of Denial book and telling them, giving them the exclusive and telling them, I'm doing this because I'm concerned about brain injuries. So his retirement was fundamentally different in some important ways from these other retirements. And as a result, the NFL was more concerned. They released a statement saying, we are getting this under control. Our game is safer than it's ever been before. We're emphasizing protecting players from concussions. So the NFL knows it has to respond to this, and the NFL is concerned about this. I will tell you guys uh, two things that uh, that I believe, and I said this in my commentary, Michael David, I, I believe that football should do away with the helmet. And people laugh at me, but rugby is played as rough as football. The weapon, the head is not used as a weapon. Rugby studies have shown that the concussion numbers in rugby, at Australian uh, rugby leagues have, have commissioned studies that it's about 5% of what happens in the National Football League. I, I've always felt, I watched a documentary last week on, on Dick Butkus and Gail Sayers, uh, and, and it concentrated on Dick Butkus's hits. He always led with his shoulder. He, he never led once that I saw in the 30 or 40 hits with his head. I think where the National Football League has to go to the little leagues, to high schools and junior highs, is to eliminate the head as a weapon. And that will change the game and that will change the number of concussions. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, Mike Ditka has proposed that as well, Woody. He, he played again in that same era that you're talking about. He was... Uh, more or less a contemporary of Dick Butkus and Gail Sayers. And he, he agrees with that. He says that when I was coming up playing the game of football, all the hits were lead with the shoulder. If you want to really get a guy, give him the forearm shiver. It was never about hit the guy with the crown of your helmet. And, and, and that's why I think a lot of people are concerned that now the helmets are such good protection that they allow people to use them as an offensive weapon. I just don't think the NFL is considering that. I I don't think the NFL is giving any thoughts to that. I think the NFL worries that you try one, even one full contact practice without a helmet and you get a guy with a fractured skull and that could be a a nightmare for the league. I don't think the league will consider that. But I do wonder, Woody, maybe the future of youth football is doing away with some of the padding so that the players get more accustomed to not – running into each other with their heads down at full speed. Good point. I, I, the other thing I was going to bring up is I have a good friend who, who's good friend, works in automobile racing with NASCAR and Indy 500. He's devised a helmet that uses the same kind of protection that they find in Indy racing and in open car racing. And I'm, I'm curious why you guys, if you think that if you're going to use the helmet, why there hasn't been a better job done of trying to develop a helmet that absorbs the impact. Yeah, you know, the, the helmet technology, if they could find a way to improve helmet technology, boy, that would make such it's a game difference. game changer, but, yeah. But, but a big problem, of course, is that sometimes it is the brain hitting the inside of the skull that causes these injuries, and no helmet can protect against that. 